Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this Visit Scotland webinar as the timetable to the unlocking of tourism becomes much clearer after the Scottish Government's announcements yesterday. So here's what we know so far. On Monday, June the 29th, zoos and garden attractions will reopen. Friday, July the 3rd, that's when the five-mile travel restriction is lifted, and also cottages, lodges, caravans will reopen as long as they are self-contained. Monday, July 6th, is when pubs and restaurants are able to use their outside spaces, such as beer gardens. Monday, the 13th of July, the shopping centres open. And then the big one is Friday, July the 15th, when pubs, restaurants, hotels, galleries, cinemas and monuments all reopen, all of course under strict conditions. So it's the news and the timeline that we've all been waiting for now for some weeks. I'm Bill McFarlane, I'm Chairman of Pink Elephant Communications. It's my pleasure to welcome onto the call Vicky Miller, who's Director of Marketing for Visit Scotland. Good morning, Vicky. How are you? Good morning. I'm good, thank you. Another nice sunny day. It is. It's perfect for tourism. I'm glad we've got some timetables to go on now. Okay, Vicky, this is the moment we're waiting for. What is the marketing plan to restart tourism? Thank you, Bill. And for those who may have just, can I just say that have heard my dog barking, hopefully he will calm down. There's somebody at the door. <laughs> um, yeah, so what I really want to do today, um, and as you say, it's been a, a number of weeks now since we spoke, as we've really been spending that time to put what I'm calling really a framework and a plan in place. But what I think is really important, the first point I want to make is we know that this needs to be a framework that needs to be agile and flexible and will continue to evolve and needs everybody's input to it. I think that's a really important point. If anything that we've learned um, you know, over the, the period of this pandemic is the need for agility to respond to what has been a, a moving situation. So this is not a fait accompli. This is a framework that I believe will um, allow us to kind of kickstart and support the industry um, as we move through summer into autumn and winter. So um, a key thing is partnership working and actually my next slide, and um, hopefully we can get up, will reflect the extent of um, you know, the conversations that we've been having over a number of weeks now with destination organisations, with sector organisations, with um, national partners, um, and doing a lot of listening to understand, I guess, local challenges, sector challenges, um, and also really taking time to review what's been going on internationally so that we can see, particularly from markets that are slightly ahead of us in this pandemic, um, and learn from, I guess, what's been happening there. Um, also looking at our analytics data to really understand um, what we are seeing in terms of search intent. So all of that has kind of really fed into and, and shaped what I hope I am going to be able to present to you. Here we go, guys. That was my partnership slide. So working together, I think, is more than ever um, going to be really, really important. In terms of where we are, um, you know, we were in a strong position 2018 and 2019, we saw periods of sustained growth, and then obviously what's happened has been catastrophic. And I think restart for me therefore has to be about taking cognizance of the landscape that we're in now. I think more than ever, it's about putting community um, and place at the heart of our approach. Clearly communities play such an important part in the visitor welcome, the visitor experience, um, and that therefore needs to be reflected in our approach and the storytelling that we do through um, all of the campaign content. Equally is timing. Timing is going to be really important and the pace at which we go needs to recognise that it's also not going to be that one size fits all because clearly there will be um, potentially regional variations in terms of where um, we see businesses maybe not opening to begin with. So we see um, a, a slight um, fluidity, I suppose, in terms of businesses opening, of communities maybe that are shielding a little bit longer. Clearly, we know at the moment we've also got some transport connectivity issues um, from an island perspective. So all that we do needs to take these factors into account to make sure that we can match supply and demand, but equally that we can boost, um, we can um, stimulate that demand 
particularly where we're seeing um, um, issues. So I think these are really important um, scene setters. In terms of our kind of strategic framework, what you'll see there is um, what I touched on verbally, I think the last time that we chatted, Bill, was really how we've approached our planning activity. We've been, which is very much aligned to the government phases of response, reset, restart, recover and renew. Response and reset in a marketing um, sense for us has been really about that armchair travel. It's been about keeping Scotland top of mind in all of our key markets. Um, and where we are now is about in restart and recovery, it's about changing the emphasis of our message and our call to action. What I would I'd then say is that the, the main stay of my presentation is I'm going to talk about the domestic recovery phase because clearly that's the biggest opportunity that's facing us right now. But what I would like everybody to be reassured of is that actually our international work continues. However, that changing the message from um, that armchair travel to plan and book your trip international clearly doesn't make sense right now while obviously there is travel restrictions in place and obviously we've got things like quarantine but again a key point of this um, I guess a flexible um, approach that we want to take is we want to be ready to um, make a move as soon as we can and as soon as um, travel restrictions and other things start to ease so I'm going to talk more about restart recovery and I'm going to focus a little bit more on domestic for now. Um, so again, another just look at the timetable. A couple of things to point out here is that again, with all the intelligence that we're gathering, we're starting to put specific market strategies in place, particularly for our international phase. Um, we're also looking at, I guess, the number of the critical factors for our international activity to be successful. So that's again looking at each of our markets, looking at the economic factors, looking at the social, the consumer sentiment. So we're actually going to kickstart with Visit Britain um, some international tracking research. We've got domestic tracking research now, which is giving us weekly data. We need the same for international. And that is really just to allow us is to inform the order of prioritization that we will give to those international markets. In terms of where we are now, obviously we're, we're in June. We know that things, as you've outlined, Bill, are going to start moving, quite, hopefully quite quickly now. Um, and therefore, we're going to focus on domestic for this kind of July, August period. But throughout the rest of the year, we will be looking at what I'm calling domestic and international movements. Um, and I think from a domestic point of view, we know that now we have got the opportunity, certainly with self-catering opening a little bit earlier, to start with um, promoting that, that book message. So what do we know so far in terms of the UK Consumer Insight? There is absolutely a need to reassure the consumer. We can see that in, in the weekly data that we're getting. There is an indication that actually visitors are going to spend a little bit less on holidays this year. Not unexpected, given that we are obviously already in the season. Um, and clearly there have been people that have been affected economically by, um, uh, you know, by this pandemic. We can see as well that confidence for travel grows from September onwards. Um, but the positive is that in the UK data that we can see, there is real strong intent for Scotland. And it's up there along with the South West, which is really positive and building on that strong position from 2019. We also can see that Scots are more likely to stay at home and I think that will be a big part of our focus is connecting Scots again with Scotland and staying local. We also know that coast, countryside and outdoors has higher appeal but what we are seeing is that you know and a huge part of our visitor offering is you know the, the city um, and town um, and what th that whole idea of a city break. So we can't forget about that, but we're seeing intent there at the moment, slightly less. So we've got to be creative around how we build that um, intent. And I would hope that as things become clearer around um, the hotel offer, the city offer, as we understand what uh, will be open as, as far as dining in particular is concerned, um, uh, we will see the intent towards cities and towns start to increase in, in the coming weeks. Self-catering, we know, therefore, right now is a stronger um, proposition. That's what consumers are, are, that's what consumers are searching for. 
And in relation to how they're booking, I think what we can see there is a real mix. So there's an important message here about everybody making sure that they are discoverable. We certainly are, are, will be working hard to make sure that visitscotland.com is discoverable and that we can pass referrals through to businesses. But clearly a big part of our approach here has to be working with some of the, the online um, uh, the OTAs simply because they give us a reach and what they will allow us to do is get people that were looking at are in the market for a holiday and are maybe looking at other destinations, other parts of the UK and when we move to the international phase, other markets, get their eyeballs on Scotland and they give us a, a very efficient way of being able to do that. So what do we want to achieve? We want to build national pride and stimulate that travel within Scotland. We want to reassure Scotland that um, we are going to ask visitors to take a responsible approach. And that's a kind of really important part here, um, I think, of the work um, that we will be doing, you know, to reassure communities that we are asking visitors to be responsible. And we've developed a visitor pledge, which I'll share in a little minute. We want to use that supply type side intelligence. So it's very much about that partnership working to inform and, de and develop the campaign over the course of, over the coming months, capitalizing the school holiday um, period that's ahead of us, um, promote the wide range of holidays and breaks that you can have in Scotland. Um, and over the course of the campaign, turn our attention from summer to really excite about what Scotland has got to offer in the autumn and winter. And extending the season is gonna be a key part of the strategic approach. Making Scotland discoverable has been at the heart of our, our strategy for a number of years now, and that continues to be so important. So that's about being in the channels that we know um, visitors are consuming information about travel. They're looking um, for that inspiration, but also they're booking. And equally is that telling stories. Um, and a, shifting that from not just storytelling, but also to story living to drive that advocacy. So really making, the industry a key part of the content that we create because after all they are delivering the experience. So in terms of the content and creative strategy, we're in June, we've created some new assets which are really about driving that brand engagement and you can see a number of them here. So we started early on with the absence film which was around that kind of more dream but the other assets that we've been created are really turned to focus much more on what makes Scotland unique and actually um, the different attractions and things that you can do in Scotland. From Little Adventures, which is about the family market and it's about two children who go on an adventure across Scotland. It's an animated film um, and that will be distributing um, imminently. And um, it's a lovely piece. Also to things like um, Dark Skies, which obviously are USP, and we've got a podcast series with tour guides. So we weren't able to film the tour guides, but we were able to create a podcast series, uh, series and that's content that will become what we call evergreen. So it's content that we can use across not only our domestic activity, but international. And now that we are in June and we've got some dates, we've also got a campaign, Where Will You Go Next? That is a social media campaign um, using very targeted social media posts and influencers in Scotland, really encouraging Scot uh, Scots to think about what will they do when lockdown is eased? And obviously we know that travel restrictions will lift from next week. So that is um, very timely. Moving into restart, um, our content here then needs to move again, on again in terms of messaging, and it's about continuing to drive that awareness and brand engagement, but clearly it has to be about that converting to booking. Um, and at the heart, also continuing to reinforce that kind of safety message and asking visitors to be responsible. So the proposition is around Only in Scotland. Now we had um, started, we launched the Only in Scotland proposition last year. It was well researched and we feel it's still right, but we need to move the message on a little bit. Why is it right? Because it plays to the emotional drivers for travel. So we know from consumers that the reason they want to travel is for that escape, for the de-stress to connect with loved ones. So if you think about the period that we've been in where for 12 weeks, we have been stuck indoors with you know, our immediate family and people on their own, actually that connection piece is going to be so, so important. Being able to 
um, connect with family and friends um, and enjoy something beyond your own backyard is going to be really, really important. But equally, it's about the authentic stories, the people and the place. And we know that Scotland offers all of that in an abundance, both across our cities and all our or the, the rural parts of Scotland. So the message is going to flex to include this sentiment of only in Scotland can travelling so little make a big difference. Now that will be the message for the Scots audience and clearly we'll tailor that a little bit for the wider UK um, market. Now this is a hero film that we are currently um, uh, finalising. And if you indulge me, I'm going to just take a moment to read you the script so that you understand the sentiment of the campaign. So Scotland, your country needs you. It needs you to feel the sand between your toes along our miles and miles of sandy beaches, to follow in the footsteps of our ancestors and get lost in the stories of our past. It needs you to enjoy the warm welcome we're famous for in ways that can make us all feel more reassured to get that much needed change of scenery, to dine in or out, to taste our world famous produce as fresh as it comes, or as fresh as you can find it for yourself. It needs you to get swept up and explore and everywhere your dance floor, to sing along however badly, to get up early and catch a sunrise and, a cozy, and cozy up under a sunset, to connect with something other than Wi-Fi and reconnect with the people you love in the country you love. So all your country needs you to do is enjoy all we have to offer because only in Scotland can travelling so little make such a big difference. So the sentiment being that it will make such a big difference to you to explore your own country, the well-being, a new view, um, enjoy parts of the country that you've not experienced, but equally make a big difference to the Scottish economy. In addition to the main film, we will have 15 regional versions. So you can see just a couple of, of those examples here. Um, very much with the same sentiment and we're working with all of our regional um, destination partners to um, firm up on uh, the content that they want to showcase on those films. And clearly in addition to those, we will have another suite of, of um, films that will shine a light on different um, Kind of products and sectors of um, our great um, offer. Um, and we will continue to develop new assets as we move through the seasons as well. Um, and an example of a specific sector campaign in, in, in this instance, it's golf. Going beyond the hero, what obviously is really important is optimising our website and making sure that we are driving that all important quality organic traffic. So we'll, again, we'll very much take a partnership approach to how we do that. Aware as well that partners are also creating content. And in fact, Mark, who I think from Cairn Gardens National Park is on the call today, um, has shared with me um, a, a fabulous film that his team have created. So we want to make use of the content that others are creating, but equally optimize.com um, to do that all important job of driving referrals out to businesses. And clearly there is an important role for our channels as well in that reassurance piece. Through our online community, we can connect visitors with community um, and you know, what is going on in each community. We've introduced a new um, uh, messenger service where our information centre staff will provide real time answers to visitors' questions because we know that is going to be really important to guide what they can do and what's open over the coming weeks. And we're also developing a reassurance video for the visitor to really highlight all the work the industry is doing to um, make the welcome um, and to comply with that, that the all important safety guidance that we've had from um, Scottish Government and promote the Good to Go scheme. So a lot of content in development. This is the visitor pledge that I was referring to and this will be something again a piece of content that will be visible to visitors that will be um, downloadable for businesses to share through their own channels and really the key here is asking visitors to to really I suppose respect our communities and our special places and that to really enjoy Scotland you know we need them to do a few things a little bit differently again I'll let you all read that in, in your own time so turning to the all-important media strategy key three key roles for media tell the people of Scotland that their country needs them at scale we want to get to every household in Scotland. Persuade the right people that Scotland gives them a holiday for them. 
and that is across the wider um, UK and Ireland. And then match in a very targeted way the different um, geographies and interests. So using particularly digital channels to get to the people that are searching for holidays and breaks and put Scotland in front of them in a very tailored way based on what they are searching and looking for. So how does that manifest? Really in two ways. There is, a, there is an element of the campaign that's about broadcast um, and that has two roles. To mobilise Scots, to get them to explore their own country, to target the wider UK and Ireland, to, to, to really extend our welcome and to demonstrate that Scotland can offer them a holiday away, but actually very close, um, so they don't have to travel far. And that's the broadcast element that's about mass reach. And then on the other side, you see the targeted element, which allows us to be very efficient and to match the different products, sectors and regions with what consumers are, are searching for. So what does that mean in terms of who we will work with and the media channels that we will use? So you can see there that actually YouTube and social media will play a, a key central role to everything that we do across the broadcast element and the targeted element. In the broadcast element, you've got a mixture there of all your kind of traditional TV, on-demand TV, because we know that the, the, certainly the demand there, people are watching more of the kind of on-demand. And again, a mixture of classic and digital radio, um, a mixture of press, and you can see that that extends across the Scotland phase and also the wider UK and Ireland phase. In addition, on the kind of more targeted side, looking at how we work with particularly the platforms that have the wealth of Scottish products. So Expedia, 40,000 Scottish businesses listed on that platform. It's sorry, TripAdvisor, 40,000 um, businesses listed on that platform. Expedia, 10,000, Booking.com, nearly 13,000. So we know those platforms are important for businesses. Equally, we know their own websites are and we want to drive those direct bookings. But equally on those platforms, we want to get eyeballs that are looking at other destinations, looking at Scotland and um, getting more of that holiday um, uh, booking um, in, into Scotland. And finally for me, um, as I started with that key message about partners, clearly we want to then provide opportunities for people to be part of that in terms of feeding into content, using our content, sharing with us the content they've created, but also, if they do have budget, the opportunity to work with us on creating specific content, maybe for their destination or sector. So we want to really be flexible. And this information um, on this last slide, because I appreciate there's a lot of information here, will all go on to Visit Scotland or will be on visitscotland.org this afternoon. So I hope that gives everybody a sense of the framework, the approach, but clearly this has been designed to be inclusive and most importantly, flexible as things change potentially over the course of the period of um, this year and into next. Thank you. Well, thank you, Vicky. There's, there's a lot to digest there. Um, tell me this, you've, you're telling me just before the call that you, you've devised a lot of this because of what businesses within tourism have been telling you. What have you learned from what businesses have said to you? So, Clearly, there is, a, there is an appetite for businesses to get going, I think. Um, and, you know, we are seeing um, areas where um, there is, particularly as I touched on earlier, that, that demand for self-catering. But again, that's not uniform across the country. So actually, after this call, I'm going to have another call with um, Fiona from the Association of Scottish Self-Caterers, because again, we want to understand where, you know, even now, because clearly, again, this is fluid, where are their gaps? Where are the businesses in that sector seeing um, that maybe don't have the bookings for the summer period? So where do we need to intervene? So I think what I understand is there's not a one size fits all. We've, we've not got an equal um, situation across the country. We know from the hotel sector that they're not seeing the demand that even although that 15th of July um, date has been given, they've not yet seen that uplift in intent and booking. So we need to look at what do we do to stimulate that demand. Um, 
So a number of things, but equally on the community piece, part of our engagement has been about um, listening to what communities have got to say. And I know that there's a lot of people on this call who've been very proactive in working with their communities to build that confidence. So again, that's why we've introduced the visitor pledge and the, the reassurance video that we are developing because we need to reassure the visitor, but equally we need to reassure um, communities that, that we are asking visitors to be responsible. So I, I think a, a number of different things um, that we have been learning that we've reflected. You've emphasised the, the need for people to be flexible and fluid. Um, we know that things can go back the way as well as forward, yeah. but you know the, the government has progressed with, if you like, cautious optimism. Are you getting a sense from the hotels um, or other tourist attractions, of course, along the way, that um, they are looking to match expectations of visitors or are they looking, if you like, to drive expectations of visitors? I think where we are now, I think now that we've got the guidance, so the guidance was really important for, as in the, the guidance around social distancing and um, hygiene, was really important to allow businesses to actually be ready for opening. And I know a number actually where we're well ahead, we've looked at what other countries are doing, um, what other businesses have been doing, um, and probably got ahead of that. But now we have the official guidance that gives businesses that opportunity. So I think with the hotels, it's now get out there and reassure. Um, reassure their previous visitors, reassure um, their communities that actually they will offer a safe experience. So I think there is a role for both, for us to build the demand, um, and there is a role to, um, I guess, get that story out there. Um, it's a fine balance too, isn't it? Because um, we want hotels, we want visitor attractions to be welcoming. The very sight of a face mask can in some ways put people off. So again, it's a balance, I suppose, between reassuring on hygiene and giving the warm welcome at the same time. Yes, absolutely. Um, but you know, that is all, for all of us, is actually our new normal. Mm. You know? So I think, um, we all that, that we all want to to get beyond our own back door um, and we know that social distancing is going to be with us for a period of time potentially you know wearing masks on public transport when we're in confined spaces is also something that we're going to be encouraged to do so i think we can get over that because that is you know what we all face in our day-to-day -day lives and i think with the opportunity and the summer ahead of us, you know, we have got an opportunity to say, look, we're, fall we're, we're doing all of this to give you that welcome and to keep you safe. And you can do that and enjoy something a little bit different. After all, we've all been stuck, you know, in our own back gardens or and, and, and for many, not even a back garden. So I think that allows us to, you know, go back to um, those emotional drivers, really play to those emotional drivers about what Scotland can offer in terms of a safe experience. You know, and I think let's not forget in terms of cities, our cities benefit from lots of open green spaces and they also benefit from being very close to a wider hinterland, you know, Glasgow and the wider Clyde Valley, Loch Lomond on the doorstep, Aberdeen with, you know, Cairngorms National Park on, its on the doorstep. So actually, you know, we can address, I think, some of the consumer concerns with the right messaging um, and really play to those emotional drivers. Because England is unlocking in many ways a couple of weeks ahead of Scotland, are you seeing any trends from south of the border that would give us encouragement as what we can expect to happen just a couple of weeks later? Um, I mean, I, yes, I mean, I think we're interesting. We have, see, I suppose what we are seeing is that there is a demand for people, people are getting out and about, um, you know, down south. We are seeing people return to the high street. We're seeing people return to, you know, attractions and, and to explore that little bit further. So, um, and we've seen that also indeed in international markets. I think the, the, while I think that's a positive, equally, I would imagine that some of our communities have maybe been concerned by some of what they've seen, where they have seen people, you know, gathering and maybe it looks like they're not actually adhering to 
the kind of social distancing. So again, that's why we want to be ahead of that. And again, I know there's a number of communities on this call today that have been doing that work again as well around through their channels, reminding their visitors that hopefully will return um, to our regions and our national parks about the responsible behaviour that we need from visitors so that it is a safe and pleasant experience for everybody. Um, so, you know, I think, yes, I think we've, we've all been learning and there are positives in that, but equally, I think there are things that we think, right, okay, we need to be prepared for how we, you know, we manage that, the, the visitor demand, particularly in some of the, the places where we don't, we want to avoid that, that congestion. Um, so that, again, is the importance of the messaging and being able to dial up and dial down what we promote, I think, is also going to be really um, important. I think the key thing as well is, and I would like to reassure everybody that is on the call, that I'm talking to colleagues in um, the other UK visits, so Wales, Ireland, England, and um, Visit Britain. Um, and while they are maybe slightly ahead of us in terms of you know, the easing, they're not ahead of us in terms of their marketing activity and their approach. In fact, if anything, I think they're going to be slightly later in going out there with activity. So, because um, I know that that is also a concern. We don't want to lose out. You know, we've got the school holidays coming up. We want to get a message um, down south that Scotland um, will be welcoming visitors um, during this next period. Somebody yeah. was asking a question there, there. Can Visit Scotland in any way demonstrate through your website or any other way <clears throat> which businesses are actually open? I know I find it handy on Google Maps, for example, to see that a, a restaurant is open or closing soon, for example. Yeah. Is there any way you, you can demonstrate which businesses are open? Yes, yes. So we, um, we will issue a communication um, just shortly with some guidance around how businesses can tell us um, a, how they can update their listing to reflect the key reassurance messaging that we know visitors are going to be looking for. If also they have, um, uh, are, are definitely going to be open that, that opportunity to tell us so that we can flag that prominently on the site. And then the other aspect of that, uh, the reassurance part, if you like, is if businesses um, are aware of the Good to Go scheme that is launching um, today, in fact, if you've followed all the, the kind of guidance, you can go um, to the Good To Go um, website. There will be more information on visitscotland.org today. Register your business to be part of that UK-wide self-certification scheme. And we will also be able to flag that you are um, part of that on your website listing. But what I would also say is that quite typically the behaviour on visitscotland.com is to do a search and then immediately go to the business's website. So they tend to click on the web link. So what I would also say is make sure you've got all of that information on the homepage of your own website, um, because that's going to be really important. What about school holidays? I mean, the, the July 5th, uh, 15th reopening in Scotland is clearly in the middle of the Scottish school holidays. It's before the average English school breaks up. But of course, people's whole working pattern has been completely disrupted by COVID. Some may be taking holidays early, some may be adhering to what you might call school holidays. How much has that been factored in to what you're doing in terms of your marketing? Yeah, so I think that's where the, 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 the very targeted aspect comes into play, because what that allows us to do is actually get to the people that are searching that are looking for a holiday and be able to put Scotland in front of them and also to be able to tailor what that message is. So as much as I've shown you, you know, a number of the videos, which, you know, I guess are the, the hero bits of content and do that more broadcast, that welcome and that, that brand and encourage that brand engagement, get people thinking about Scotland. It's the targeted activity that will really hopefully drive that intent, but also encourage people to kind of stop and think and go, well, actually, it is possible. Maybe I wasn't going to do it, but it is possible. But the targeted element is so, so important because that gets us to the people that we know are looking to book a holiday. And you did say earlier on in your presentation that a lot of the, the focus is on the later holidays, the autumn yeah. holidays. Yeah. Is that because you sense that people are going to be very cautious to begin with? And you've already fed back that hotels have perhaps had 
slower interest for mid-July? Yeah, I think, you know, it's because of the circumstances we're in, you know, and if you look at what's happened in other destinations, as we be, as the, the other markets have eased out of lockdown, the economy's restarted, people have been able to travel further. What we've seen from the international data is that that search intent starts to increase. So we are only now starting to get the, those dates. Um, and so I would hope that week on week, we start to see in this next period, that confidence building and that search intent increasing. I think self-catering is has been the, the kind of go-to because people know that within their family bubble, they can go there, they can be, uh, you know, they can, they can still isolate, they can still adhere to social distancing. That's obviously been an easier thing for people to conceive as a holiday idea. But I think things will change. And we've seen that, I, I guess, in some of the international intelligence that we've gathered. So, you know, let's, I, I hope, and I'm hopeful that that will change, but equally, we've got to intervene and, and, and do that to make sure that we can tell people that might be thinking about that city break and that hotel proposition or that service proposition, if you like, that actually we've, we are gonna make that a safe experience, albeit it's gonna be a little bit different. I see a question asking about the, the percentage of your spend in Ireland. Clearly that's a big part of your, your thrust. Is the thinking simply that it's local, people from Ireland may feel safe coming to Scotland. What's behind Ireland particularly being part of that marketing campaign? Again, intent from Ireland, so we're seeing it. Um, it has been a market that we've not done really anything in for a while, um, but there is, there is connectivity, there isn't the travel restrictions. Um, we're seeing it in the intent data and in, in the research, so it just seems like the perfect opportunity. Um, you know, in the absence of being able to get, you know, turn that message to a, a plan and book now message internationally, Ireland, I think, gives us another opportunity um, as part of that wider UK campaign. So fear is possibly the word that we've all been talking about so much in the last three months. Uh, and clearly, when we talked before, we, we talked about communities being concerned about the influx of yeah. tourism. Has your messaging with the communities, do you believe, given them reassurance that this can all be blended together? So I, I think, I mean, it's not just Visit Scotland. We, we've, that have been, I think, very active here. I think a lot of the destination organisations have been doing a great job and in actually going out there and proactively doing that, you know, having those community consultations. Visit Scotland has also um, taken a lead where um, there has been support required there and where our, our, certainly our regional teams can play a role in supporting um, and influencing those conversations at a community level. Um, so that has been important activity in what I would call this reset phase. So I guess a number of things were part of that reset phase and getting the conditions for restart which was that community consultation piece and those messaging. And we've actually got on visitscotland.org a number of community case studies where you know, we think they're really great examples of what that consultation and what that messaging can look like and how communities have come together, I think, to, to um, reassure um, all aspects, you know, the, the community that includes the people that, love their, uh, that live there, the people that are going to be working in the tourism and hospitality sector, really important too. Um, so I think there's some great case studies and great content on visitscotland.org. There has been these extended um, consultations through our regional teams and indeed um, many um, destination organisations that have been very active. The other aspect I think of Reset has also been just about a number of industry webinars that we've ran with a number of my market, the marketing teams and other partners, I guess, just around the opportunities around the UK market, around, I guess, how we can all evolve our messaging and how we can all successfully target the UK market. So these have all been important activities that have been part of Reset so that when we get to, you know, we've now got these all important dates, we can get going. Um, there will be, I think, a few more webinars around the, the kind of health and hygiene piece because we would appreciate that people will probably have a number of questions around that and we want to support businesses through that that do. Um, so 
I think lots happening around reset, not just community, but that has been a really important part of, of what we've been, been proactively doing. I see a couple of comments there about the islands of Arden and Lewis. And of course, they've been particularly vulnerable because of travel restrictions and yeah. communities on an island might feel even more exposed. Have you been doing any extra work for the islands in terms of helping them to regenerate interest in tourism again? So I think, you know, with the islands, um, interestingly, I, I think, um, and May and the call will know better than me, there's actually a strong desire to visit the islands so the consumers want to go. Unfortunately, the travel restrictions, as you say, means that there's capacity issues. So I think with the island um, destination organisations themselves, I think, are, and through ST and others, you know, I have an ongoing conversation and dialogue with the Scottish Government around the transport um, challenges. Um, and clearly we hope that the conversations around um, the two metre rule, that if there is some flexibility there, that gives us the opportunity to clearly, you know, um, support the islands with their restart. It is a difficult situation right now because of the transport issue. Um, and you know we will want to continue that dialogue with the islands so that we know for each of them what is going to be the right time for us to, to help them proactively market um, but clearly it has to be when um, we know that we can get more people safely to the islands so how important then is a further relaxation of the two meter rule to england's one meter plus is that have you been asking the Scottish Government to do that? Gosh, we've all become immunologists, haven't we, in the last few yeah. months, yeah. as if we'd even heard of yeah. these things before Christmas. But have you been saying to the government, yes. we need to relax yeah. this? Yeah, I mean, Malcolm um, Ruffhead, our chief exec, has, has um, weekly and sometimes has a daily conversations with the Scottish Government. Um, and, you know, that, that has been, the, the whole transport um, and, the, and the island um, challenge has been, I think, kind of top of the list of things that Malcolm's been talking about over a number of weeks now. Um, and, you know, the destination organisations themselves and along with STA, you know, have continued as well, I think, to, to, to get that message across. But clearly, we also need it to be safe. So as you say, you know, it's all about the science. And um, however, we've seen that real relaxed in England. So um, I would hope that it is something that is not too far away for Scotland. And I, I see from the web chat that a new CalMac um, timetable is launched from the 1st yes. of July. I think based on the two metre rule, yes. that yeah. of course would have to be updated again. Yes, okay. it would. Uh, I, I, I and, and we're talking to CalMac, um, you know, they're, they're amongst many of the partners that also want to be part of our activity. So we're having ongoing conversations with them so that we can, we can work with them as part of um, you know, what we do in the coming weeks and months. I get a sense overall, Vicky, that um, the whole tourism community is working more closely together than ever before in all of this. Do you see some positives that will have long-term benefits through this sense of community? Definitely. I mean, I, for me, you know, the industry wouldn't be the industry um, without that collaboration. Um, it has always been, you know, an important aspect um, of what we do. What is great to see is cross-boundary collaboration between destinations, um, sectors being really creative about, you know, how they, they tackle and review the offer. How, um, and, and so I suppose, you know, I, I think we will come out of this stronger. Going back to my, I suppose, one of my early slides, um, and is, is the fact that we want to, you know, I think we all have identified that community now needs to be at the heart of our planning, because actually it's communities themselves that play that essential role in the welcome and the visitor experience um, more than ever, I think. So, uh, yeah, I, I think we will come out of it stronger and more collaborative. Um, Definitely. Um, a question asks if the Scottish um, tourist offices will be open from mid-July as well, because they're, they're often central in directing people. Yeah. 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 Where to go? 
Yeah, so I, I think until we ha we obviously had the guidance um, from Scottish Government, we um, we had kind of focused really on getting that that um, messenger service up and running and tested because we weren't quite sure when we would obviously be able to open the doors. But Manuela, who heads up um, our, our eye centre network, is now working with our, our kind of business continuity team, if you like, to look at the adjustments that we will need to make. Um, and obviously, clearly, things like signage and all of that good stuff that we'll need to put in place in order to open the centres. And we will do it on a priority basis based on, on also what we're seeing in terms of demand. So um, that we can, you know, we can phase it so that we are getting them open where they're going to be needed most. But yes, we're on that one. Just to feed back some anecdotal evidence, my daughter was telling me yesterday she has booked with a well-known hotel in St Andrews for a couple of days, but the prices have shot up. Now, to what extent do you think uh, the business owners are going to have to reflect the difficulty of social distancing in their pricing? And are you seeing already that pricing coming in as being more expensive than last season? That's a, that's a difficult one for me because I guess every business know, you know, has um, their own business model. I think the key thing I would say is from a consumer point of view is think about the, the, the value add. The offer is going to be a little bit different. So if pricing is going up, think about then how you add value to the offer maybe in a slightly different way. Clearly what social distancing will mean, I think the one um, thing that I would take from it is that it's going to maybe feel like a bit more of a personal experience. You know, uh, if you take hotels, for example, I would imagine that buffets are not going to be necessarily the way to go. So it will be back to maybe a more personal table service. That is indeed something that people will value and actually will be looking for at this point in time. So I think it's got to be reflected in um, what we can see consumers are looking for. And I, I would really just ask businesses to think about that and think about if you are up increasing your prices, thinking about what's the value add not just in terms of your own business, but maybe how do you work with businesses in the immediate area to look at how you, you, you maybe build in the activity package, um, you know, or a visit to an attraction or whatever. So be a little bit creative around the value add. What would you say to business owners in terms of what they can do, particularly in reaching out to their, their base of loyal customers? How should that messaging if you like, dovetail with what you're doing and what different messages could they add in? Yeah, I have to say, I've seen some really great examples of businesses, you know, that are doing this really well. They're creating um, videos for their um, social channels. Um, I would imagine and putting on their website, actually explaining um, what measures they've put in place around the health and hygiene and, and the, the distancing guidance. Um, you know, so I, I think there are some great examples of businesses that have been really fleet of foot in doing that and getting that those messages out, as I say, through their channels. So I'm seeing lots of that, which is really encouraging. Um, and I would just encourage maybe those that haven't, you know, is to do that. And I think, you know, the other thing is just looking again at your website and thinking about the keywords and thinking about what people are now searching for in terms of a holiday and break and make sure you're creating that content on your own um, websites um, that um, will reflect what people are looking for so that you pull in that all important you know um, organic traffic and direct bookings and what I would ask if there is anybody looking for any one-to-one -one advice on any of that you know we we can offer that through our industry relationship managers or indeed my own team if it's if it's more around the kind of wider digital marketing piece you talked about the international travel early on, Vicky. It, it felt as if it's still quite a long-term goal. Is that the way you see it? Because of the uncertainty about quarantine and airlines and international travel restrictions? So it is. Well, is it a long-term goal? We want to be in a place where we can move as quickly as those restrictions ease. And you know, if anything is... You know, what we've seen from the last few days, you know, we know that there's a review coming up of quarantine at the end of, well, fact, imminently. Um, so we are in a good place. We've continued with our PR activity, our 
um, contact with um, particular tour operators and other travel intermediaries in the market. Um, we're helping them build you know, itineraries and things for Scotland. We know that there is intent from some of those markets to come to Scotland later, later in, in the year if they can, or as soon as they can in some cases. Um, but clearly, again, we're going to have to follow the guidance that's set out by, um, you know, by government here. So we are continuing to be active and we will be ready to go with activity as soon as we can. We actually paused activity in a number of our key markets. So there is activity that we can kind of kickstart again, um, albeit, you know, we will need to maybe change some of the messaging. But being fleet of foot around the international piece, again, I think is, is, is really my message. And that it's so, not stopped. No. I saw a comment there about self-catering. And if there's any clarity on several groups staying in self-catering accommodation, the, the question there was saying particularly that we're booking for a multi-generational group. Well, I'll give you an example. In um, October, I'm due to be away with my son and his wife and his children with my wife, but also the in-laws. Now, then it gets complicated. Bubble, <laughs> bubbles might have to extend a bit there if that's all going to work. What do self-catering operators do with the complexity of bookings like that, Vicky? Oh, very, very good question. I think Fiona... The answers <laughs> on a postcard to this. <laughs> <laughs> we we may think, need um, a bit more clarity yeah. from the government on that, because of course there are nuances within all of this. Absolutely. You know, and I think we've got specific guidance right now around what that bubble looks like. And I guess what we all must kind of do to stay safe. Um, but again, that will change, particularly, um, you know, I think over the course of, of the next few weeks, as we know travel is going to be, that be able to, to travel further. You would think that if the R number continues to come down, you know, the bubble potentially will get bigger. I, I would like to defer that one probably to, to Fiona, um, who is our, um, you know, who's developed the guidance for the Association of Scottish Self Caterers. Um, I think she is the expert in this, and I will, let's, let's get an answer from her. And as I say, I'm due to speak to her this morning. <laughs> so I'm going to put this to her after. I think it's a very good question. I wonder if the advice also might be to the business owner here to stay open minded as long as they can. Uh, yeah, absolutely. With the flexibility you talked yeah. about, because things absolutely. will change rapidly. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. we've just got a few minutes left here. What would you now say to people on the call? Uh, we do have clarity about the time scale. We will have more clarity about the one meter, two meter rule. Timetables are being published for ferries and so on. What is the message from Visit Scotland in terms of capturing the interest that you've been helping to generate and the business owners have been helping to generate off their, own, off their own back in the meantime. What will you ask people to do now? The key for me here goes back to what I said at the beginning is to keep that dialogue. You know, we, we, at a business level, we need to know who's going to be open. Um, we're so going to need sure to tell you, make sure that they let you know for a start. Absolutely, absolutely. Right, okay. And I think, you know, at a community level, at a destination level, we need to keep talking so that we create the content, the messages, and we understand the particular challenges and issues, and we can reflect that in all we do. So it's that all important to me dialogue. Now, as an organization, we have regional teams in place. I have regional marketing managers. We have regional directors. We've got um, industry relationship managers who will have a relationship with, with businesses on a one-to-one on -one basis. Please do use those contacts. Um, and if there are specific things that you want to come direct, my, my inbox is, is busy, but you know, I, I, I want to encourage that dialogue. Um, but there are many routes in, um, and so please do take advantage of conversations with all of those people, because we're gonna need to continue that two-way dialogue. That, that's, I think, the, the key here. Vicky, it's clear from all the work that's gone into this, you've been unable to get through as many Netflix um, box sets as you might have wished in this period. <laughs> and clearly, <laughs> the team has been putting a huge amount of work into this, and it's been a collaborative uh, event with all the businesses. Um, thank you very much for your time this morning. These updates are, are clearly very interactive. There are a number of questions have been asked that we've been unable to pose because of time, 
the Visit Scotland team will handle that. Yeah. And I see actually the PR team has been back and forward on the web chat throughout this. So many of the questions have been answered already. But also we'll turn around the recording of this as soon as possible and it will be on your website. Vicky, thank you again for your time. Good thank luck. Thank you everybody for weeks. joining. <laughs> okay. Thank, thank you very much. Stay safe Bye everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.